So I thought it'd be fun to go through the schematics here of the Rachel Dana uh, 9, uh, 1992 counter. If you were going to design a counter and you had an input and it was going to run into some type of counter uh, chip, what what preconditioning do you think you would do? Would you filter it? Would you um, have an attenuator? What What would you do? And then eventually you need to set a threshold to do the um, comparison, right? You need to have the input signal sampled. So you need to have a threshold. When, when does it cross zero? When does it, when, when is the start of a period? And when is the end of a period? So you need to digitize the incoming signal. It can be a sine wave or it could be a square wave. It could be a triangle wave. It could be anything and you need to square it up. So normally you would run that through a comparator. Um, so for an expensive instrument like this Regal Dana, um, how much electronics is between the BNC on the front panel and the comparator that ends up sending out ones and zeros for the, the incoming, incoming frequency. You will be surprised. All right. So this is, um, let's see here. Let me just going to draw. So here's the BNC coming in, coming in. And uh, the path that we're going to take is going to be this away. And we'll go up here and we'll come through here. We'll come, just to give you an idea, this is the path that we're gonna we're gonna be taking. There's a secondary path uh, where things come things come this way. So we will look at those we will look at those two paths. So when it comes into the instrument, we remember that we saw a lot of relays. When I took the can off, I was shocked at how many relays were under there. Well, here's the first relay, and that relay goes to two 100 ohm resistors to ground. So this adds a 50 ohm load. So there's an option button that you can press on the front panel to either have high impedance or 50 ohm impedance onto the uh, counter. So that's what that first one does. Um, the second relay we will find here, okay? And that will say, do we want a DC path or do we want an, or, or do we want an, an AC path, right? Here's the AC path. So DC or AC, that's the next, uh, that's the next little uh, relay here. Then we go into, into this thing here, and this thing here is an attenuator. Do we want times one or times 10, right? And so that's what, that's what that section does. And then there's two, two ways we can go. We can take this top path, and that's for high frequency information. And there's a path down here for low frequency information. So they have two separate circuits, depending on whether you're looking at high frequency or low frequency. So the high frequency comes along and it goes through a little bit of filtering here and it goes into a FET. I hate it when it does that. It goes into a FET. And that's just a buffer. That's so you have super high impedance on the input. And then it will come through a, probably something like an emitter follower. It gets AC coupled and then another emitter follower and then it, and then it goes out, right? So the other path that we're gonna take is this one. It gets divided down a bit and then it goes into, into this section here. It goes into an op amp, all right? So just recently I did a, um, a video on offset nulling. If you have, if you want to have uh, the, uh, the offset voltage offset on the input, very, very low, you can add an external potentiometer to do that offset control. And here we can see it right here. Here's our offset control for this, for this particular op amp. I'm not sure what version op amp this is, but it's on pins one and five, which is typical for something like a 741. Um, so it's coming into here. It gets, uh, it just gets buffered with a, with a, um, with the transistor. I'm not sure why. And then, um, it is a non-inverting amplifier. So the feedback, the feedback comes over here to this resistive string. So this is the, uh, this is the whole, oops, this is the whole path here, right? I didn't draw that well, okay? So the, the positive comes in here, 
and then the negative feedback comes here and it goes into this string here it goes into like this it goes it goes like that and so there is this divider right right here that, at the end okay and this divider sets the gain of this um, of this op amp and is it tied to ground normally you would tie it to ground no it's tied to something else and uh what is that something else why is it not tied to ground why is it tied to something else okay so we'll move over here and we can see that um it's tied to here and it goes to somewhere else in the circuit in fact it goes to something called h2 and h2 is a hybrid circuit and it's actually a d to a converter so it sets the trigger voltage. What it does is it sets the offset voltage for this divider string. So you can move it up and you can move it down. And we're going to be threshold detecting at zero. So we can push it up nearer zero or we can push it down farther away from zero. And so this is the trigger level coming in. They also allow the trigger level to go out to the rear panel. So you can actually monitor the trigger level external to the instrument. All right. Um, Okay, so that sets the offset here. And then the last little section here, um, I found quite fascinating. I've never seen the circuit before. Um, and that is it has to go through a bridge rectifier before it gets to the comparator. So this is the comparator that will compare it to ground. Okay, so this is the final, is it a one or is it a zero? And then uh, the signal goes out to the timing chips. But what's this thing? It looks like part of a power supply. What is a bridge rectifier in here? And it's not clipping. The diodes are not in the right orientation for clipping. Normally you'd have diodes would be pointing in different directions to the positive rail and pointing in different directions to the negative rail if you wanted clipping. But no, they're in this weird diode arrangement here. And it is a limiter circuit. It's like a compressor circuit. And it limits uh, the voltage swings to plus or minus one volt, um, or probably some more likely plus or minus point 7.8 volts, something like that. Um, I think that the, the write-up for this thing said plus or minus a volt. Um, but yeah, it has to it has to come through either positive or, or negative oops, and uh, and make it through. So a limiter circuit, I, I've never seen that before. It's uh, it's quite clever. And then, like I said, we're, we're comparing to ground and there's, there's what we go. And then there's a B channel as well. Remember, here's here's the A channel. Here's the B channel. And so this duplicate circuitry down here, completely duplicate to do the B channel stuff. Um, there's also one relay, if you're wondering what this one was, uh, let me draw here. If you're wondering what this relay does, it says, um, keep the two channels separate. So run channel A through the top, run channel uh, B through the bottom, okay? Or you can flip it so that it runs channel A through the top always, and also channel A through the bottom, both. Um, I don't know why you do that, but that's what it, that's what it's rigged up to do. Um, sorry. Anyway, I thought that was really interesting. Um, the The rest of the counter isn't too particularly interesting. We can take a look at some of the stuff. Uh, here's the... Uh, uh, the counter chips. So there's a uh, a custom a custom counter chip, completely secret, and uh, followed by another chip I think which is completely secret, <laughs> and uh, then they are tied together with this thing, which is a hybrid circuit. So this is the um, little circuit that does quote timing correction, and it 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 looks at signals on these two chips and. I don't know. It sends signals to the second chip depending on, on things that happen in the first chip. And uh, it, it makes it more accurate. <laughs> don't ask me how, but supposedly it makes it more accurate. Um, and then finally it goes into a buffer that allows you to read it with a microprocessor. Um, and let's see here. Do we have... Uh, this is just front panel weird things. This is the uh, microprocessor uh, and associated ROM and RAM and things like that. And 
data output, all that stuff. This is just normal microcontroller type stuff. So pretty boring stuff in here. And then another thing that's interesting on that is the actual um, reference. Um, let's see, is it here? Yeah, it's here. Um, This is sampling phase detector. Loop amplifier. Um, yeah, they <laughs> they pay a lot of attention to the phase of the reference oscillator. Because if your oscillator has jitter in it and you're not sampling your reference exactly on its particular phase every single time um, you will have jitter in your in your frequency measurement and so that's they, they have these all kinds of fancy circuits here to take care of all of that and something I don't understand but the thing that I thought was interesting was this particular thing here I don't know if anybody caught it but when I was look, uh, taking pictures of the inside of the instrument you noticed on the main of an oscillator, two transformer cans, two IF transformer cans on that unit. Um, and here they are. Uh, let me draw here. Uh, here's one of those uh, IF cans, and here's one of the, another IF can. What are IF cans doing on a 10 megahertz reference oscillator? Um, I, I was really, <laughs> I didn't understand. Um, well, it gets worse than that. <laughs> gets, um, so the reference oscillator comes in here. Okay. So um, reference oscillator has a voltage and a ground, and then it has an output. And so the output comes into this uh, little um, diff amplifier, and then it goes into this weird, weird circuit. Uh, it's got a diode and it's got another diode. And it's oaring together these two phases. So this thing's going to flip-flop back and forth depending on if it's the positive part of the sine wave or the negative part of the sine wave. And they get added together here before they go out. And what is that doing? Well, it's a doubler circuit. <laughs> okay. And so the main oscillator is operating at 5 megahertz, not 10, 5 megahertz. And then they frequency double it. Once they get done frequency doubling it, they run it through an IF filter. So this filters out any harmonics that shouldn't be there. So it's like a 10 megahertz um, bandpass filter. And then it runs through a second 10 megahertz bandpass filter. So they've paid a lot of attention to this, to this main oscillator. So they don't just drop in some 10 megahertz thing. No, 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 no. They jump through hoops with this with this reference oscillator. So yeah, that's why this thing is. Set. And then finally, it says here at the end. Yeah, now we got ten megahertz. Great. Um, so yeah, that's why this thing's so darn expensive. That it, all the phase relationships, the way that it digitizes things, it's just super super accurate. It's a very very nice machine.